50 plus sir, average. 50 plus. No, that's not bad. That's not ah. bad. Because our uh, registered engineer hmm? got cut off. We lost him, Sanat Kumar. Dr. Babu's uh, connection. Sanat Kumar? Oh, you got, it came back. Yes, sir. Just, uh, some Lost you for a while. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. All of these are deputed trainees or? Uh, yeah, actually, 20 members are deputed uh, from Nirmiti Kendra. Oh. They are working under uh, district collector. Hmm. And uh, remaining our uh, construction management training institute, there are 25, uh, it is a YouTube lecture link also there. Okay. A program of yours, uh, yeah, more audience can benefit and we are shared for all research groups. Uh. Good, good, good. Oh, yeah, money will... Uh, right. uh, I'm homing, hoping that through you, we can reach yes, sir, more yes, and sir. more people. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That is the only thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, director, sir, please join me. Sir, it is YouTube is live now. I will share the link, sir. Okay, okay. Sir, my members has to come now. In one minute. Before recording, I'll check my direct also. I am not recording now. Okay, okay. YouTube is live. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Sir, we welcome our uh, director, uh, engineer uh, Srinivas Rao Kulkarni. Hello, uh, Srinivas Rao Kulkarni. Sir, he's good evening, sir. <laughs> you know, if, if it were not for this talk, I wouldn't be meeting all of you top people and uh, bureaucrats and technocrats. So, thank you. Sir. I may not mention you individually, but I thank you all for uh, organizing this and giving us an opportunity to talk to you. Yes, sir. I welcome you. Are you are based in Bangalore also, Mr. Kulkarni? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very much. I am in Bangalore. Of course. My, my, my Bangalore was Kaadamalleshwara. Ask your daddy or grandfather about yes, Kaadamalleshwara. Yes, sir. Because your generation might not know what I am talking about. <laughs> Sir, uh, great, sir. At this stage, you are uh, addressing us. <laughs> sir, sir, also established <laughs> <in> <laughs> yeah. But as of now, I feel good. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> sir, Navella, Navella, 70 cross active on the top. That is why. I may, I'm sharing a slide with you later. Sir, sir. None of you might have actually met or seen uh, Visheshraya. Yes, sir. Yes. Unless you are in the 80s, or 70, late 70s. Mm -hmm. But I had the good fortune to be, has just become a teacher in NIE. Sir. And, mm -hmm. uh, sir, MV visited us, went mm -hmm. around the labs, and I had the privilege of photographing him with my founders. 
Yes, sir. Nice to hear, sir. <laughs> and uh, there are so many stories I cannot share them in today's talk, but <laughs> sir, we will have one uh, link meeting, sir. Definitely. We'll any have... number, yeah. any number. As long as you involve uh, people who are interested in the history, in the development, and uh, how great we can be if only we made up our sir, minds. Sir, Professor also translated a lot of uh, Sanskrit to English literature, sir. A lot of. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Dr. Babu, as one who has attended my talk in Bangalore, I am surprised you didn't contact me earlier. <laughs> oh, sir, not that, sir. Because I, we are in teaching, now I came with a full-fledged... Uh, no, you didn't probably it. know I was still alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, not like that, not like that. I know. Because I, know. I attended both of your lectures also. Oh, both of them. Respect. Then yeah. you remember the place where I put my hand in and tried yeah, yeah, yeah. to grab something. And... Yes, sir, yes, sir. You have designed and invented uh, so many safety equipment. Yeah, I, I, have, I have three inventions. Yeah, you have a credit of copyright or patent, I can say. Yeah. Two credits as I see. I see. I saw sir. Actually, I attended three days second conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I enjoyed all of them. BSC yes, Rao uh, organized them. Okay, sir. And uh, I, I felt yes, Bangalore uh, Center is very active, sir. Even I am also a fellow member of ECC. ECC, yeah. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Very active. Yes, In sir. fact, uh, they gave me a Gaurav Award. So how can Congratulations, I? Congratulations, sir. Congratulations <laughs> once again for that. This news. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Now the audience is speaking yeah. up. Yeah. So, thanks to yeah. thanks to Professor Sir uh, Sir who visited us. It is a great uh, opportunity for all of us. Uh, yeah, yeah. I hope you you have time to stay till the end of my lecture. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Today I'm uh, <laughs> I'm free, sir. I already home, sir. Actually, I'm. Sir, I give one 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 hour forty five minutes. Uh, all the questions uh, they can post in chat because we okay. want to listen more lecture from him. Uh, Instead of disturbing or interfering in his talk, therefore I request a one hour forty five minutes you can take sir. One yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, any time. In fact, I can cut off at the end of my sentence if you give me a second. Sir, I am putting for record. Yeah. Okay, we better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> What time we can start? We can start, sir. It is four, almost two minutes is there. Two no. minutes. Wait two for minutes. two minutes and we can start. Wait, 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 wait. Because uh, the initial talk, sir, has to speak something. Eh? After that, we can start his uh, topic. There are only about 10 extra participants. We may have to wait. I don't want to wait no, past. Sir, for they, will, they, will, they, will, uh, they will come, sir. Okay. okay. So good evening to one and all present here. I'm very happy and uh, honored to welcome distinguished professor and the leading global consultant in the area of construction safety and uh, environment. Uh, and also he's a consultant, also a trainer for a big organization. We are all very much honored, sir. Uh, you, are, uh, you are the speaker of the day and a uh, lot of uh, information you are going to share with us, your experience, everything. So on behalf of the Society of Bharat Ratna, sir, Mishweshwarya, Skill for All Center on behalf of my director and my own, I welcome you wholeheartedly for this uh, seminar. Actually, the phase two seminar is going, sir. Phase one, we completed offline 13 days for the Nirmiti Kendra engineers. There are 30 engineers are deputed by the government of Karnataka. And also there is an upcoming skill center at the Chikbalapura. It is going to function and the new building will be inaugurated on September of uh, 2022. And there's a full-fledged office and residential complex, academic block, and a lot of uh, CSR companies are extended full support to Skill India concept of our Honorable Prime Minister of India. Our director, Sir Srinivas Kukandrausar, is uh, taking initiations to develop. Because of he, uh, him only, I am here to coordinate the central activities. Center activities. Yesterday, I'm happy to share that we have signed MOA to E2E. Uh, the, we are providing a job opportunity, skill training for railway sector. So railway sector is coming up in India very big way with the metros and uh, railways. A lot of engineers are required with respect to signaling and electrification. Therefore, this, our center has to plan to uh, train and produce a lot of master trainers and skill members to take up the upcoming jobs. So that is the, one of the information I wish to share. And also we are planning for plumbing, verticals, welding. I'm happy to see your profile, sir. You have wrote a lot of books on welding. We wish to use the welding technology, sir, for industrial welding. Because in construction, without welding, it's very difficult to go for any joining of the steel members. 
I'm very happy to go through your uh, wire data. I saw that a lot of uh, consultancy are in there in the area of welding technology. I welcome all the honorable members and also I welcome uh, uh, the principal of Nagarjuna College of Engineering Technology. He is going to join. I have shared a link to principal, HOD, and all HODs of Nagarjuna College of Engineering Technology. See, actually, they may log in at any time. I welcome on behalf of our society and my own behalf. And also, I welcome all uh, my engineers, uh, in the engineers, and CMT trainees uh, for uh, uh, accepting orientation. And also, there are some of the budding engineers also joined from across the state, from Tamil Nadu. There are 20 students who are going to join. And YouTube link has been shared to many organizations wherever uh, they can take the advantage of the lecture. Once again, I welcome all of you for this uh, for today's uh, the seminar, guest seminar by Distinguished Professor Dr. N. Krishnamurthy. Sir, before going to the uh, talk, uh, just I wish to introduce Professor to the August gathering. Dr. N. Krishnamurthy, sir, is a leading consultant in the area of safety and also structural and also computer applications. And he is born in the year 1931 in Bangalore. And also, sir, is almost uh, is a very youngest uh, speaker among all the speakers. He uh, uh, is 91 plus age. And also, uh, I'm happy to see, sir, you have a 65 years of experience, both academically and also the industrial consultancy, all these things. And also, Professor Krishnamurthy, sir, is having a residence at uh, Singapore, USA, and Burma, and also in uh, India. Now, uh, Professor has uh, well settled in uh, Singapore. And also, he graduated from NIE. We know that number one uh, college in ba Karnataka and National Institute of Engineering, Mysore. Well, everybody knows, graduated from 1955. And also, he got a first rank in, the, in all the years of engineering. Afterwards, the professor has moved to University of Colorado. There, he completed MS and PhD. After that, he has uh, uh, excelled in all the professional experience and also industrial experience. He is uh, having an uh, experience of almost uh, 63 years. He has worked as a member of many committees and also developed a lot of course materials and completed a lot of works at the Singapore and US. And also, he is a member of expert committee of OSHA factories, Government of India, Ministry of Labor and Employment. And also, I'm happy to share that. Uh, I think I welcome Arvindan. He is with us today. He is coordinating uh, where professor has been developed a center of excellence at Mysore Management Training Consultancy on Workplace Safety and Risk Management. I welcome Mr. Arvind. He joined from Mysore. Thank you for joining the meeting. And also, uh, National Institute of Engineering Distinguished Academic Visiting Professor. I am also happy to see that, sir, you are conducted, uh, taken a lot of classes, even uh, whenever you are visiting Mysore. And you have served as a faculty of uh, engineering, both uh, the National College of Engineering, SJCE, and also Maharaja College of Engineering. And also you have uh, delivered a lot of subjects in the area of uh, the forum work designs, uh, safety of health and environmental uh, with respect to the factories, and also risk management, project management training. And also I'm very happy to see that, sir, you have developed a lot of software applications with Infosys. I, I came to know that you are close associated with Infosys and develop a lot of uh, software applications required for the industry also. And also the, uh, completed a lot of US-based projects uh, during his uh, 60 years of service. And professor is having a lot of honors and professional societies. Uh, few to mention honor from the societies are Chi Epsilon uh, Sigma Tau. Uh, this is academic honor societies all from USA. And also, uh, uh, professor, is, professor is also a fellow and a founder member of American Society of Civil Engineers, Singapore section, and also Structural Steel so Society founder member and Institute of Engineers India, and also Association of Consulting Civil Engineer India, Professional Engineers in USA, and also many association as a member, fellow member with the leading organizations in US and India. And also, the professor is having a lot of inventions, copyrights with respect to his. Uh, excellence in uh, service. See, one of the computer, uh, safer diamond, this is one of the invention copyrights by the professor, computer graphics based techniques of, for risk assessment with a minimal input of likelihood and uh, severity patented in Singapore and Australia. Congratulations, sir. Barcode, scaffold, false work, modular system designed to local ports 
for fast erection and safe use. This is one of the work as uh, patented by the professor. The next is the safe walker, automatic seat support aid for persons collapsing while walking. This is under pending. I think it is processed already. And advanced congratulations, sir. And also, I'm very happy to see that professor has translated a lot of literature from Sanskrit to English and uh, got an award, a Krishna Deva Award, uh, copyrighted. And also, I'm happy to see that recently, professor got a few awards. We are very happy to, and also we are to have you as a role model. There is no age for achieving excellence in our profession because you are a very youngest uh, academician and also excellent in the professional 90 plus. You are all role model to all of us today who are all watching uh, this seminar. See, actually recent awards backed by the professor, April 2021, Singapore Standard, <clears throat> Singapore Standard Council Enterprises Singapore Commendation Award for contribution through, uh, through his work for the technical committee for RC work of the government of Singapore. And also recently, the uh, Association of Consulting Civil Engineers awarded Bangalore chapter, there is a Gaurav Award. Congratulations, sir, once again uh, for all your laurels, achievements, and we are happy to see the complete uh, profile of you. And also you have uh, authored uh, many books, uh, uh, just to mention few introduction of bridges, introduction of computer graphics, structural welding. We want to make use of uh, your expertise in the area of welding, sir. Shortly, we are going to conduct when welding workshop on master's trainers. We request to have your uh, services for this also, sir. And also a lot of essays on forensic engineering. And also, I'm happy to share that a few years back, I attended the professor has delivered an international seminar in Bangalore, forensic and civil engineering. And uh, happy to see again, sir. And also written a lot of technical papers, almost 100 papers called uh, referred journals, sir. Uh, presented with the various uh, topics like uh, computational applications of sector, workplace safety, risk management, forensic, and also reviewed a lot of journals and books. And also, he is having uh, general articles with respect to the periodicals of the national India. And uh, we are happy and honored to have today, sir. And uh, I think uh, all uh, participants will agree. So we are all blessed to have a lecture today, sir. Once again, welcome you on behalf of all the participants and my own behalf of uh, thank you for accepting our invitation and uh, we are ready to deliver for our note on this conference of seminar thank you very much sir thank you professor Appa, if you had gone on for longer i would have said it's cutting into my talk not like that sir you are you told we are not met <laughs> i know i know thank, thank you, you very much thank you very and much also welcome uh, director sir srinivas yeah. for this uh, seminar yeah. And also the Ashok Kumar, uh, CEO of the CMTI, and all my Thank fellow you, friends, and Mr. Sanat Kumar is the online coordinator of this program. Welcome you in second all of you. The time is yours, sir. Thank you. I don't want to take much time. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a program of which I am very proud. And I hope I justify all the praise that has been lavished on me because I have a philosophy about talks. Don't mistake me, all the introductions were very, very satisfying and flattering. Most of it is true. Sometimes, you know, in the translation, I have not translated many Sanskrit things, but I created a translating, transcribing, that is the Sanskrit sounds to be reproduced in English, but that's a minor difference. And the philosophy I'm talking about is it doesn't matter Yes. What I have done in the last 63 years, it matters what I'm going to do in the next 100 minutes. Because, <laughs> no, I, I have felt that because sometimes, you know, people come with a lot of uh, very good track record, but maybe they are very good, but what they say may not be relevant and what they say may not get to the So, I hope that in the next uh, hour and a half or something, what I say. And next point is construction is, I am supposed the world over the largest industry and known to be the most hazardous industry. I'll talk about why and all that. So it deserves even more attention than we are giving presently around the world. But the topic is so huge, it is like an elephant and the six blind men. 
luckily i have put uh, many decades into studying consulting teaching so i'll try to touch the highlights of what i have learned and share them with you maybe later on if there is enough interest we can organize uh, specific uh, talks on specific topics with that let me get to my slides we will have a question hour about 15 minutes towards the end i'll try to stop by 5:45 and uh, then we'll see how it goes so let me now share my screen okay you see the opening slide i am able and, to uh, i am able to see sir you can see yes sir yes sir construction sound, sound is okay yes, sir. okay okay sir now i have highlighted the initials bmv nt fsa thank you sir thank you very much and unless <laughs> unless you know what it stands for it's a mouthful okay, what the americans call and it is so good that you you are involving the father of all civil engineering or engineering in india in such a noble effort so i am very proud to be part of this activity better late than ever never i guess but uh, what i am uh, next slide will show me of course this present slide uh, just outlines my website at the bottom right and uh, my two hats i wear one of them is the founder director of the center for workplace safety and health in mysuru india of which i have one slide and then i also happen to be presently locked up so to speak due to covid in singapore otherwise i travel between india and singapore and uh, here i am known as a safety consultant and trainer so uh, the main focus for my activity in india in my final years is the center for workplace safety and health i won't take too much time but it is my duty and privilege to show you before that i want to tell you how proud i am that i happen to be one of the people who can claim to have met and said a few words to our uh, bharat ratna bharat ratna sir mv you can of course identify him the people surrounding he visited my college just when i became a teacher in 1955 august and uh, he went around the labs and had a lot of praise for it at that time we were one of the few leading colleges in karnataka and people of course in turbans and uh, coats and panchakacha which is not very fashionable today are the trimurtis the founders and the president of the governing council and uh, mr minister and so on so this is something i keep as a memento and uh, i feel very good that i was in the presence of greatness there are many stories i have heard but uh, maybe not this is not the occasion now the next slide is a very one slide on my center of course they named it after me because i set it up and so on it was inaugurated by padma vibhushan nr and narayan murthy who i am proud to say was my student for two or three years when he was doing his electrical and electronics engineering in nai so we are very closely related and in the earlier years i had something to do with infosys of course i did not write we did not write very elaborate software after they became big but when they were starting we had some small things to do with them anyway after that the we signed a, a memorandum of understanding with nie and our motto is very simple straightforward we are here to keep you safe or make you safer if you are already safe at your workplace and elsewhere too we plan to raise the awareness of workplace safety in the in the state in the country by webinars and training sessions on various aspects of safety and health if i had more time i would show you a slide of my team but two or three of my team people are already here we are a very small team we have uh, three deputy directors a mr arun rao who has spent a lot of time in canada and is an expert in airport safe management safety safety management then we have uh, 
Mr. M.S. Vijay Shankar, who is a well-known uh, construction engineer contractor in Mysore. And uh, recently we have added Mr. A.N. Prakash, who, is very, who has got lots of projects all over India. So one of them takes care of administration, the other training, and the other one uh, planning. Now we have our own uh, full-time assistant director, Mr. H.S. Aravind, who takes care of executing and uh, carrying day-to-day -day activities of our center. As I say, I wish I had time to show you pictures, but you can always, anybody who is interested, all you need to do is to either go to our web website, sivosh.com, or if you can remember, or you can contact Dr. Babu or Sanat Kumar, and they will be happy to direct. I think this is all I'm going to say. Remember, we are young and we would like to like your support and cooperation later. Now, coming to today's topic, I'm trying to cover probably too much, but I'll stop, as I said, at uh, 545. But I'll try to cover critical aspects, real life examples from not only India. India is great and it's the biggest democracy and the second biggest, uh, most populated country in the world. But we should probably also look at other countries to set ourselves where we are and where we want to be. Construction being the most hazardous, problems faced, specific solutions, and we'll match the global perspective, specific focus on certain things like falls from height, act optimal solutions. I, I hope I have time to cover all this. And if we still have time or maybe on another occasion, I'll share my experiences on the standards committees in the three countries. Okay. Now, let us believe it and let us be proud that construction industry is probably the most important, the most critical for survival of mankind today. Why is it so? How is it so? We may not recognize some of our own importance. We may be wringing our hands and saying, oh, I took civil engineering, I took construction. Look where the other people are going. The other people have their place in the sun, but construction is absolutely essential. Sooner or later, we are going to get into the mainstream. And I think it is time we got into it because all engineers make everybody's life worthwhile, all engineering technology. Among them, construction engineers are special. You know why? Because we build and maintain the homes everybody lives in, the schools everybody goes to, the offices everybody works in, the roads everybody drives on, the bridges everybody crosses over, the tunnels everybody rides through, the malls everybody shops at, you name it, we do it. The airport everybody flies from, the hospitals everybody gets treated. In short, engineers, civil engineers, construction engineers do everything everybody needs and wants but we are getting a bad name. We could certainly correct it. Why is it considered the most hazardous industry in the world? It is true. It is not whether it's India, Africa, China, or USA. All over the world, construction is the most dangerous industry. And it's easy to see why. We are probably the only engineering activity that takes place in the open at the mercy of the elements, the sun and the rain and the dust and the noise and the heat and the cold among around us, everything is going on. Everybody is rushing to do their thing and we must do a good job. And we are the ones who work at heights and depths. We work in confined spaces. We are getting interferences from so many places like other structures, natural obstacles, human involvement. And we are the only ones who must get it right the first time. Almost every other product, people can produce by the dozens, by the hundreds, test them, find the mistakes, improve each part, cut down where we are wasting material and give them a finished 99.99% for perfect product. But try telling a bridge engineer, let me build a sample bridge. And then if it stands up and we load it and then we'll do the real bridge, they'll say you belong in the madhouse, not in construction. So we are the only ones who are facing the elements. We are the only ones who should get it right the first time. Now, how do we compare with the other sectors? There's a lot of data around, around, available around the world. 
for instance, from you don't worry, it's almost the same all over the world. I've lived in three environments, and so there is not much difference. It's only a matter of degree. For instance, in the USA, as recently as 2014, and it is not historically changing much at all. Construction is 21%. Transportation, it may include transportation structures. And then it's also the same in Indonesia. Across the world, Eastern Hemisphere, construction is 32%. Next comes manufacturing. And in Japan, construction is 32%. So all over the world, what about India? I'll talk more about where we should improve ourselves. One of them is in data collection. We have good data from government agencies. We have good data from hospitals, medical profession, but we do not have good data, enough data. The what data we get is good, but we don't have enough data from the industries. So what little you can glean, you can extract from good Indian estimates is the maximum fatalities in India 500 per day is in the transportation sector, but I'm not talking about accidents to vehicles and people riding carelessly or without helmets. So all I can get from this data is false. False is that uh, greenish thing. 3.2% of all the deaths, not in industrial deaths. So even in India, we got a lot of construction deaths. Why do they happen? And what kind of uh, things happen, okay? One, they mostly happen at the construction stage or erection stage if it is prefabricated building. But fewer things happen in design, but not much during use, except recently, especially in Bangalore. I'll come to that later. And if it is not maintained properly, naturally, things don't serve you well, okay? And design errors can cause mishaps at any stage in the structure's life cycle. There is a lot I can say about it, but let me put it briefly. There are relatively very few failures of permanent structures. Of course, in India, due to various reasons, certain types of structures, we hear a lot about their failures. But why is it that we don't hear about them? That is because we rarely push every structure to their maximum design capacity. Luckily, thank God, we design it for a 50-year life or a 75-year life. Compare it with the life expectancy of a cell phone. Don't be surprised that the three models ahead is already in the works. Every six months, you get a new model. That's all the life maybe maximum one year, and we boast about having the latest model. But in construction, you erect structures these days 50 years, but look at the temples, the churches, the forts, everything around you inherited from our ancestors. They have been there hundreds of years. How come? There are reasons, but modern technology is faced with more challenges than our ancient technology. There they had complete access to all the materials available, all the labor available, and the competition was not so cutthroat or whatever. So they happen mostly at the erection stage, not due to the life stage. Design errors can happen due to many reasons. I'm not going to read them all. I show you so that it may impinge on your mind. Wrong assumptions in design, design errors, material deficiencies, equipment faults, ignorance, negligence, and there is another legal word called collusion. Two or three people agreeing to do wrong things. Or lack of competency. It depends. If you pick the wrong professional, you get lack of competence. Improper understanding, bad workmanship, lack or inadequacy of safeguards, etc., etc., etc. I cannot cover them all. I'll cover a few. During use, accident have root causes in misuse or abuse. People overloading. People getting us a license and building six stories, suddenly out of ignorance or avarice greed, they trace two or three more stories. What else can happen? Misuse, abuse, uh, built something that was built as a residence being used as a factory. That's an abuse. Deterioration of materials if you don't take care of them. 
and during maintenance and demolition, ignorance, negligence, incompetency, incompetency, and so on. So these are various causes. I'll tell you a few important world renowned or world infamous uh, ac structural accidents, construction accidents. This was a hotel in Kansas City. And then it was, it's, it was built uh, uh, and after a year or two years, it was built in 1980 and one year later, it is very interesting. You see three walkways here in pink. The right hand bottom walkway, there is a dance in the atrium floor and people gathered on the, what you may call the walkway or the balcony and started jumping around in tune with the dance music and it collapsed. And when it collapsed, it killed 114 people and injured. This is the, after, uh, the morning after the collapse. Why did it collapse? A simple design construction error. I cannot go into the details, but it is something that a first year engineering student can understand. It's simple statics, but it's a little interesting. We asked them for PhD students also, how did the higher Regency fail? Show me on a blackboard or a whiteboard. It's tricky, but all I can say is the contractor could not do a long threading of one rod, which came from the ceiling through the top first like walkway to the third walkway. So he said, I'll put two rods instead of one. Sounds very logical. I'll put one rod from the ceiling to the first uh, walkway and another rod from the first walkway to the second walkway. Okay, not okay because as I don't have time, but you must understand or agree that when you substituted one rod with two rods, the load on the nut became twice the load. It was not designed for that. As simple as that. So that was because the designer did not take the time to check. That is one reason. Another example is also, I get lots of examples from USA because USA, good or bad, are very, very frank about everything. They're good things, they're bad things dirty things, clean things, whatever. So you get a lot of good information. This was a sports stadium and the people were proud. They used the first 3D trust analysis program. The first 3D trust analysis program. Okay, they designed it and a computer cannot make a mistake. Even today, the same blind spot exists. A computer cannot make a mistake. Of course, when I teach computer analysis, uh, computer course, I tell them only one proven case of a computer hardware error, Pentium 4. All the computer errors are in programming. All the other computers are in programming. And today's opinion is unjustified, but very rarely broken, is that a computer and an answer must be perfect. Six decimals, right? Well, maybe another lecture I'll show you how six decimals can mean six decimals of garbage. But today I want to say the first program, 3D program of trust analysis enabled them to start with the pod like shown on the right hand side. And then they were all put together. And then that night after a sports event, the snow fell. And unfortunately, this it didn't drain off. It didn't melt soon enough. And so it collected and due to that extra weight, it collapsed. How can it happen? How can it happen with top designers doing it? One reason, you see the three reasons at the bottom. One reason, they used four angles in the wrong position. The four angles facing each other would have made a big, solid, very strong composite section. But the four angles back to back made the weakest section possible. I don't know how they did it. It sounds so silly today. Then overconfidence in the first 3D analysis computer program and ignoring warnings about excessive deflection during erection. It happens all the world over even today. It happened in Singapore in 2004. Computer program done by professors cannot go wrong. Don't ignore. I mean, don't worry about the readings. They Maybe the instrument is bad. They, you, must, you didn't check it correctly. And one mistake, which was the root cause, they shifted the connection by about five centimeters. 
connection was supposed to be made at this point. They moved the connection of the many, many members coming together. I'll show you in the next slide. This was the designed connection. That is in the cruciform shape, which itself was wrong, but they thought this would make an easy connection. Four different places, uh, at least, were supposed to be connected to the root. But the contractor said, I cannot get into that corner. I'll give you a better deal. Huh? I can weld more if, I, if you let me move. He didn't even ask permission. He simply moved it by five centimeters or so. What is the difference? They didn't recheck it. Anytime a change is made in the design, you must reanalyze. Oh, it's only a minor difference. Reanalysis will cost uh, 50,000 rupees. Oh, look what happened. In the first, in connection A, the connection capacity fell from 160,000 pounds to one tenth of it. Connection B, from about 200,000 to 60, one third. Connection C, six and a half. Connection D was the only one that stayed okay. This simple move. So you can imagine how delicate, like a baby, you must carry it come to completion, taking care of every step. Any change means reanalysis. Don't ever ignore. And don't think, oh, I have done 50 buildings. I have heard that very often. Today, I give the 100th lecture. I plan it like my first lecture. In UK, 22-story apartment building, one of the early 68, one of the early precast assembled buildings, precast panels, precast walls, precast slabs. And a gas cylinder exploded. And it blew out the wall. And when it blew out the wall, the support of the top floor was removed. So that fell, that fell, that fell. And it continued all the way down. And they checked the building and found newspaper bundles inside the concrete joints. The panels are perfect. They're factory produced. But a wall and a slab, floor slab or a ceiling slab, have to be connected in situ. So there is a gap and there are rebars and you put fresh concrete and then cure them. Somebody, and it happens all over the world. Don't think it's only Eastern Hemisphere people, third world countries. It can happen in the best country. Human mind is the same. The noblest and the most evil, they're all the same. So they put newspaper panels. Happened even in American, uh, the New Orleans flood was partly caused by bad, bad construction. Anyway, shoddy building, lack of structural support of outside the corner walls. You know what they did? They thought it's not just this building. The whole project, I think uh, six or eight blocks of buildings were demolished. And then they re reviewed the entire uh, supervisory role and the approval roles, and then it improved. We learned from our failures. Okay. Singapore is the fifth safest country in the world today. When this happened, it was the 15th or 18th safest country among 120 countries. Even that, even one of the safest, what I'm trying to say is human beings are human beings, but it's only a matter of degree. In 1986, a building which was built in 71, 58 years, 15 years later, it collapsed. Very interesting. The building was trying to tell them, I'm failing. You know, when, when you work with engineering 63 years, you begin to give souls and feelings to inanimate things. So I say buildings feel. I say a computer feels when you pump, pump it, hit it badly, it hurts. So they, it was the column tiles were falling. There were cracks in the ceiling. People patched up the cracks and put new tiles and blamed the tile contractor. What happened was sad. It looks ridiculous that uh, uh, Singapore can do it, but this was 1986, 70, 86, 71, you see. The dead load was omitted in the design. Can't happen anywhere else. Of course, unfortunately, 33 persons died, but hundreds more were saved by very dramatic movie-like methods. Discovery Channel is a one-hour special on this great world hotel. If you remember the name, name, 
go to it during the weekend. It's a dramatic story of how tunnels were dug, how oxygen was sent, food was sent to the trapped people and how they saved 1,800 people. Anyway, this is the before and after thing. Foundation error is more and more common because everybody is rushing through. We are building on river beds, which we should not build. Just because we did not get rain for 10 years, what is to say that it, there won't be rain for 11th year? Why are we giving up on nature? We're already hurting nature, but at least if we stop doing that, nature will revert back to our uh, plenty of earlier years. So foundation errors are increasing, even in UK in 2015, and usually it's a matter of excavation. Without going into details, you see this, the bottom right sketch shows you when you excavate close to another building, you better be sure that that building is either founded on rock or you isolate that foundation and strengthen the foundation. Otherwise, you are not only going to cause a problem to your site, but your neighbor's site, which may escalate into six figures of compensation if it is not killing people. Now, then we get some funny things. Uh, it looks funny, but <laughs> this is from China. China has some of the best dramatic, iconic buildings in the world. I keep watching them, their bridges. Their, oh, anyway, at the same time, some of the things they do, some, I don't know what, how much more is there, but whatever gets public attention, this whole building simply fell down. You see the Many stories, except in two or three stories, it's breaking it in the, in the bottom middle. The crane is already breaking it. Otherwise, the entire flat, the entire 10 or 12 story building just flipped over. And do you know why it happened? It was doing okay because there are so many other buildings around it. But they, the next adjacent site started digging. Not only that, they dumped the debris on, on the other side. So it's a double punch. One, they're weakening on the right-hand side and they're over on the left-hand side and they're overloading on the right-hand side. That together simply got pulled and fell over. Very embarrassing. But there is more to come. This bridge was supposed to be opened by somebody, some important person. Of course, Normally, they are very good. They are very good in design. They are very good in erection, dramatic things. But this one, as bad luck will have it, luckily it happened before it cut the ribbon. The week before it was supposed to be opened, they removed the farm book. When they removed the farm book, it quietly fell down. And when they examined it, there was no steel in it. And you know, of course, without being told that reinforced concrete without reinforcement is just good for sitting upon or a, a compression member, not a, a, a tension member or a bending member. Finished. Anyway, I'm probably unfair because we have more troubles than they. And the saddest, most recent thing to our neighbor, Bangladesh, everybody has known that because it's only about eight, nine years so a garment factory. And without going into very great emotional things. You know what the government factory was producing at a miserly, measly pay for the actual workers. A sustenance pay, survival pay for the workers. They were producing for Italian, Spanish, and UK, and American rich people's fabrics. This factory got probably 10% of the profits made. And the workers got 1% of this. They still came because it survived. What happened? On the walls, I'll show you, there were gaps and cracks. And the engineer said, sir, this building is weak. We should not have built two more built stories. It is going to break up. Let us stop work. And the manager sir, said, stop work. But we can't do that. Gucci will complain. Another somebody will complain. We'll be losing the project. No, no, no. They must come. If you can't sign it, you leave. I'll give you one month's pay. You better keep quiet. He got another engineer to sign, to sign that it is only a plastic crack. Thousand hundred people died. 
and of course then the fashion industry is got very very sympathetic and they poured money and they decided we will not use any more such things we will check the buildings i don't know what it is today these were the cracks and i i have to cover his eyes because legally i am not supposed to show the eyes if i don't get his permission he says it's not a crack it is just plaster that came off we called the engineer and they looked at this plaster and they said it was okay then he went out of course for his uh, other things and uh, it collapsed so what the real problem with construction failures is unlike most other failures it's a human tragedy it's a human tragedy and the reason for this is negligence or ignorance I, god forgive the ignorant is a biblical and maybe even a hindu statement this is the real cost of ignorance or negligence there are a few more some things due to again i cannot blame architects or any particular group it is the owners it is the developers who must take care of the future problems so that is why in many countries life cycle design is becoming the key word rather than design and hand over let them worry about it then the builder builds it and hand over and let the people worry about it the design is probably one year or six months the construction is probably two three years but the life of the building is 75 years so that is what we must look at and so we must think about a life span entire life cycle so digging so close to these buildings what would happen to those buildings this is chinese repeated and then some fashionable curvature it on paper it looked good but they, when they built it the reflected sun focused the due to the curve it focused it like a sun solar cooker and burnt cars and in fact somebody fried an egg right in that heat he didn't need an oven at all he brought a pan and broke an egg and it became fried egg india too many to respond but then i'm not going to be a complete critic compare population wise we are not that bad if you reduce it to so many per million population or per lakh population what are the problems faced the problems faced are then this is from a recent lnt report from design temporary works quality of concrete quality of workmanship inadequate precautions i try to get indian sources unfortunately there are not many of them but i am very proud that i am able to find a few to use and then which particular material since we use more concrete than steel obviously the failures are mostly in rc and priestess concrete and then here what are the root causes scaffolding we are very few of that construction technology disaster related design fault our design faults are not so many about uh, 10 12% okay then what stage of construction can have can the mistakes happen design stage i have shown you a couple drawing stage construction stage there are temporary structures and permanent structures more accidents happen with temporary structures it scaffolds and uh, farm work and uh, i got a lot of data on that use not many maintenance india's problem is we are good at design we are good at conception but we don't maintain we sell we can compete with the world in our products but most complaints are the first batch is good subsequent batches are not that good and it delivers it doesn't maintain so maintenance i think is a key factor in our improvement modification dismantling natural disasters we cannot help it's the same all over the world it doesn't uh, matter whether it's the first world or the third world a tsunami or a hurricane is the same and then who are responsible <laughs> we divide it pretty evenly architects project manager civil engineer electrical engineer hydraulic engineer mechanical engineer structural can be combined with civil but this is uh, most uh, from an international publication but we can also track some of those even in india and what materials and what stages at the design stage timber this this is coming from usa mostly so usa loses a lot of timber because it grows a lot of timber it 
it takes very good care of them you can get seasoned timber for any grade any size then building processes maintenance and reuse steel happens to be culprit in this material other okay now reported concerns recent construction 38% design normal use and again this these are just different views just to give you a background i cannot dwell on any one of those you can see maintenance the gray area the steel needs more maintenance because of rusting mainly timber depending on where it's from and which country and then in concrete you don't have much maintenance but in uh, construction you do it right the first time it serves you for a long time otherwise it's a problem then i must going to i'm going to introduce normalization of deviance this is a word phrase which was coined in usa when the one of the satellites they sent the 22nd one like a bus it came back 21 times carrying a crew of seven and bringing them back safely so they got overconfident so when the engineers try to tell them tell them don't shoot the 22nd one because the temperature is going to fall and the tube is going to freeze the fuel tube they said you engineers always complain the we are the management people we run 22 successfully we are going to do that the vice president is coming to launch to see the launch they launched it the fuel tube got choked up and it blew up in mid air 72 minutes after launch and seven people died forget the billions of dollars that was spent on it they coined the phrase normalization of deviance deviance deviating from the norm violation it becomes normal i'll show you some of our own examples in our own lives if a pipe is leaking and we cannot do nothing about it we stop worry about it if it gets too cold and then uh, some room is cold we just get used to it and put more rugs on it we don't worry about the costs that is normalization of deviance in no other country i have been in many countries this is a, i wonder how the bills are correctly charged of course i know you can pay somebody to connect your line to somebody not your excess line to y and therefore you get very little bills this should not happen this obviously apart from inefficiency it is also so dangerous it can catch fire it can cause explosions how much can we how are we tolerating this bangalore i know bangalore more than any other city i suppose bangalore was one of the most beautiful places when i was born up to the point i did my bsc and b now people don't even see these things let alone worry about it as long as their inter- internal interior of their house is clean top class the best in the world outside who cares cattle are sacred but they have their place not in between traffic where especially when the people are in a hurry to go when there may be ambulances trying to go and if you hit a cow it is finished i shouldn't show this i hope it has improved this i have to show 500 people died it has nothing to do with construction but this my only chance to crusade about helmets 500 people die out of them about 40 50% are two wheelers out of them about 60% are helmets so a good 20 to 25% of the 500 people are helmets okay don't keep on harping on it accidents injuries heavy cost inefficiency bad workmanship delay damage wastage continuous of continuous of illegal and unethical practices so what loss of business loss of prestige and loss of moral fiber loss of pride of being an engineer aren't they going to ask isn't it an electrical engineer who designed this and is is not a inspector engineer ready for that aren't they i'm going to ask isn't our highway engineer a road engineer a footpath inspector responsible for this where have our moral fiber gone this is engineering normalization of deviance 
So part of the problem and part of the solution is that even though highways, of course, construction of highways is part of construction. We take this casually. Oh, be careful, huh? Two wheelers can go this way and that way. But how about four wheelers? They jiggle that way. And unfortunately, there have been deaths, apparent potholes are hiding open manholes. A doctor in Bombay died, famous doctor who could have saved so many lives. He thought it was a pothole, his front wheel went in, he fell head on and died. And of course, I cannot talk too much more about transportation, not at enough attention to maintenance. This can happen anything. Then this is the doctor I talked about. This was left open after some time, this got filled up and the water covered this and it fell in here. Of course, there is a story behind this. I may be running out of time. Of course, the story is that, no, I better not tell that. It was somebody's pregnant wife who could not put her foot down. So the husband came and opened this so that the water could drain. He forgot to close it and somebody died. Of course, there are good people around who take care of the open places, the potholes on their own, which their own money, and that is good. They also wrote to the municipal commissioner, he did something that is good. So people must be proactive. What did I do? Whenever I am used to these things, so I don't close my eyes. For instance, the this was a from a, a, a screenshot of a TV. This is the hero, obviously. And um, there are three or four gundas around him and he's going to knock their teeth off and all that and win his favorite girlfriend. That is not what I'm going to talk about. Look at these beams. You see the steel here? You see the steel here? You see the steel here? Is this a cinema set or a TV set or a real building? It's a real building. People have been flocking to them as tourists. Movie companies have been using them as sets. Nobody seems to have said anything about it. Surely there must have been inspectors. There must have been municipal engineers. And uh, I sent this picture to, a chan to the channel and a newspaper. Heard nothing. But I'm not saying you should not write. What I'm trying to say is public must become aware that they are finally the ultimate sufferers. Don't blame the engineers. You take care that the engineers do their job. The engineers will take care that they're contractors and they will do the job. If the public leans back for their own personal comfort, then everything bad will happen. We are the engineers also are part of the public. Status of construction safety. I show you a picture from the British Times for one reason. This is brick construction. Look at the level at which the middle of the picture laborers are working. The work has been lifted to their level because the British found even then that people who have to bend down, get strained and do less productive work than people to whom the work is raised. How about us today? Of course, there are very enlightened engineers among us, but most of today's brickwork, not only is on the ground level, but we are also becoming famous for using our women folk, our youth, for carrying loads beyond their capacities. Ultimately, construction industry has to care for its people and for their safety when they're working at heights. There are too many things going on. I'm not, again, I, I respect the causes but I don't think we should keep quiet about them. I'll try to give some solutions from my viewpoint. Building failures in Mumbai, in other cities, Bengaluru, it's become famous in recent years, West Delhi, Goa, Chennai, all over India. Of course, these things happen in even other third world countries and developing countries. But structures designed for 50 to 100 years should not fail. I mean, it's, uh, it's absurd. It is like people who should live an average of 50 to 80 years, all of them dying in a young age. This is structures dying. And unfortunately, our favorite city of Bangalore has become notorious in one year or two years 
to have so many collapses. Most of them are foundation problems, and most of them are because the water level has gone down, because we have been sucking up the life-giving water for our own convenience and necessities, you might say. So it is statistically we know that uh, we have 7.5% of the total world labor force, and it contributes quite a bit. But it's difficult to believe that construction is the largest, second largest, the first is agriculture, the second largest unorganized sector in the world. Of course, there are reasons. You talk to an industry person, you will hear things like, well, they're not stat they don't stay in one place. Today we get from one state and day after tomorrow I get from another state. What can I do with them? What can I do to train them? All these are excuses, not reasons. Anyway, that causes problems to contractors, I agree, but all this must be solved in a very positive way, in a logical way. Causes of construction fatalities, 40%. These are statistics, 40%. The rest are minor compared to that. I'll talk more about falls in a few minutes. Possible hurdles. To me, if you remember in my opening slide, I said one of the goals or missions of uh, CWSH, my center, is to raise the awareness. If I can raise the awareness of the 47 people here, you may already be aware, in which case, excuse me, but if I can raise the awareness of the 45 or 47 people today to do something about, see, see the problem, recognize the problem, do something, even if it is simply to write a letter to the editor, Never close your eyes. Tomorrow it may come back and bite us. We never know when our own kith and kin, when our own friends, let it be an enemy. Why should he die accidentally like this rather than in a fair fight face to face? Anyway, lack of awareness, lack of data. That is my biggest complaint as a teacher and as a scientist. Without data, we cannot understand. We cannot analyze. We cannot predict data, factual, credible data. We are afraid of sharing our failures. That is where America, Europe, and UK shine because they open their failures. They admit them. Law punishes them, and the uh, public media publicizes them, and the universities and the government departments correlate them. Here, our government departments are doing a very good job. I will lay, if not the blame, the reason in the door, at the door of industry. Of course, I'm also in contact with industry through a committee I've been working with. They give their own problems. They blame it on the contractors. The contractors blame it on the subcontractors. The subcontractors blame it on the workers. Sir, they don't tell us as if, if they told them they would do everything correctly, is it? Anyway, I am only complaining or stating a fact. Who am I to complain? I am stating a fact that we lack data. Once you start collecting the data, you better be sure that we will improve. We will improve by an order of magnitude because then we have something to analyze, something to predict. Normalization, I've already talked about. And corruption, I don't want to only home in on that aspect, but then this is more prevalent here and in some other countries than elsewhere. It is no country is devoid of free from corruption. Take it from me. I have stayed in two or three current countries, but in construction, it is relatively rare. And then in many countries like ours, there are syndicates. You want to buy brick, you got to go through somebody. You want to get sand, you close your eyes to the illegal, illegality of it, and you can only get it in one way. And what do you do to build a hospital? You know, you got to get sand. You close your eyes. Normalization of demons. So something else must happen from higher ups. Lack of pride. That is what engineers can do and should do. Lack of pride in our profession. And I will say, probably because I'm outside, I'm able to see these trends. Lack of pride in our nation lack of will, lack of collective action. And I refrain from talking about what the government can do because 
I am I am in a government committee, and I understand we are doing our best. But the others in the middle management must take it and present it. And then, of course, the famous Kennedy statement: "Ask not what your government can do for you, or your country can for do for you. Ask what you do for your country." So that is also part of it. Although you cannot quantify it. Coming quickly to Indian statistics, we have very good statistics from the National Crime Bureau. Although you know a crime must happen before we get the statistic, so number of incidents, number of deaths, they are very closely correlated. Almost the same numbers, almost one death per accident. And then here there are more statistics from act crime bureaus. When even somebody is dead or some hanky panky has happened, then there is a crime charge, and then from that we know that maximum is in flyovers and other structures. Residential thirty seven. Commercial building twelve percent, and it includes temporary structures also. Status: I'm going to rush through some of these slides because they are all available from public media. We got a lot of good things. Big companies are world class. I won't mention names, but three or four, half a dozen of the top companies in India are competing around the world. Their safety record is good, but they have problems bringing it to India. but most medium small and micro companies either do not know or if they know they do not care there are not incentives there is not much it is coming it is coming i know the good things that are happening they lack guidance they lack enforcement safety concept is almost unknown people must spend an average of 2 and 1% of their projects on safety around the world singapore started with half percent in 2004 Today's world competing two and a half percent. Top companies, ninety-eight, ninety-nine percent safe companies like Exxon Mobil, Shell, and Dupont, and a few other companies spend eight to ten percent of their project cost into safety, and that is why they are ninety-nine percent. Aren't lives valuable? So we must spend at least a minimum. Now, because of uh, high rate of unemployment and the abundant workforce, we compromise. and people want to get to work regardless of salary and safety records migration these are problems that the contractors also face i understand and uh, good legislation is going to filter it down that much i am sure safety effort typically contributes 10% any country's uh, developing country we have six times many fatalities as other and these are all facts that i have already talked about Bureau of Indian Standards, National Safety Council, and uh, many other organizations are doing a very good job. And uh, let me show you a few more. DG Fasli, with which I am closely associated, because they invited me to be a member of their expert committee for reviewing all the occupational safety regulations. They are doing a tremendous job, but they are the apex body. It must just filter down, and in a way. i am proud to be associated coming from the top to our level or my level your bmb and fsa is also contributing to the safety by talks like this so i want to make a special note of that so apart from that there is this bureau of indian standards they have produced good uh, national building code nsc national safety council and uh, all that remains is for them to reach down to smes it's happening something is being done about it and then i can go on and on but you get the idea where do we stand in corruption a few slides i got to stop in about 15 minutes i'll try there are some measures of corruption and they are ranked about 100 100 countries the least corrupt top means not the top corrupt but least corrupt are denmark new zealand where the score is 88 90% and at the bottom of the scale we got venezuela yemen they are they got their own problems 15 12% is their own honesty level in this in this yardstick we must not confuse it with uh, uh, there are questions which i'll answer later now where does india stand uk 77 number 77 usa lower than that malaysia lower than that china a little ahead of india very close surprising i should say surprisingly who am i to judge pakistan without enough data 
But according to the reports, international reports, Pakistan has uh, worse corruption than us. Is that something to be happy about? Let us look at our own state, compare ourselves to the higher up people and improve. Then, interestingly enough, it doesn't happen too often, but one famous case, and here I say that is where I take my hat off to the American openness and transparency. So the vice president of the country, Spyro Agnew, was a civil engineer. He rose from very humble circumstances to the vice presidency. But once he became, even before he was trying his hand, but once he came, that he has made a very simple statement. You give me 5% of every project, we will both be happy. And it went on. It went on until he made, he became greedy and started doing some tricks with his internal, I mean, in his tax things, and then he got caught. And then even then, he tried to get away using his vice president's position. And because of respect to the place, to the position, they let him off with a plea bargain, meaning some fines and so on. Anyway, that is one notorious thing. It doesn't happen too often. Then I lived in Boulder, which is about 30 miles from Denver. And it's a sad case, very rare. But the contractor put clay balls into concrete to save cement. Not only that, he falsified uh, inspection reports, lab test reports, and managed to uh, modify computer outputs. All this, they got caught and they were fined very heavily. $300,000 is half a million dollars. Of course, the other companies also falsified test results. And this guy tried to, he's an American citizen. He tried to commit suicide, but failed both times and was put in jail, sentenced to 21 years, all because greed. He could have got as much money by conducting the test properly, but he tried to do too many tests with not enough time. So he got caught. And unfortunately, the company that took over also did the same thing and got caught. In other words, people will be paid. There is not much you can find from Singapore. You can examine the web. Maybe one small corruption case per year. It's a small country, no doubt. But one thing that made the news was this guy who was uh, just uh, asked to pass certain uh, construction bills or construction audit reports. And then, of course, once they get caught, they lose their entire career, their entire savings. It's not worth trying to beat the government in Singapore. In fact, uh, it's a small country, so we cannot scale it up to India, but they are doing quite well. They are the second or first richest country in the world and fourth or fifth safest country, not, up, not in just in workplace, but even for ladies walking and in people carrying uh, valuable things and so on. Now, unfortunately, in Bangalore, in a way, fortunately, because somebody has to bring it up and ACC Bangalore Center has done a remarkable job and they got the statistics and they found so much percent, an average of 85% of the buildings had not been built according to approved uh, standards. And without going into the details, they, uh, look at this. They are using this guy, this owner or developer is using a light pole, not only avoiding, uh, not only setting back from it, but using it as a structural column. Very brave. Huh? Of course, naturally, he got caught. So one point I want to make, I, I'm not going to judge whether 40% is too much or too little, but whatever percentage is, there are two ways of looking at corruption. Is the corruption uniformly distributed in all our activities? Then it may be bearable. For instance, one country which I will not, uh, which I will not name actually gives you a receipt for greasing the palm. They call it service charge, 5% service charge. There, everybody drops 5%. It's not going to be, you are 95% safe. Everything is 95%. So, but when you come to 40%, if everything drops 40%, we are losing a lot, but that is not what is happening. When you lose, when you give away 40%, it's safety, foundation, because they're early in the game, profit, design, architect, everything is cut. Labor is cut little because they're already being paid very little. Materials and equipment you cannot have. So this is what we must avoid. And one, a couple of slides on GDP and fatality rate that may also explain why our fatality rates in third world countries, low GDP countries are low or high fatality rates. 
So you can see from the chart of uh, fatality rate against GDP, the worst, uh, again, according to the statistics, I cannot name them as if they're worst, Nepal, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Bangladesh, and all these have a very low GDP and very high fatality rate. India is better in fatality rates, but low GDP. And you can see that the high USD GDP have low uh, fatality rates among them, Taiwan, Korea, Singapore, Macau, UK, USA. So you understand the relationship. And Hong Kong conducted a study and uh, they found a correlation between uh, GDP increase and accident rate decrease. So you, there is a connection. How do we rank in the global safety scene? How good is our data? We don't rank. We are not available. This is a country which shows the best country, safest country, uh, UK, and Singapore is somewhere in the 1.0 region between UK and Denmark. And the maximum shown here is Burma, 26 deaths per 100,000 workers. Where is India? It's beyond the shown chart. And estimates are, when they don't get estimates, do you know what they do? The ILO and WHO says, which is the country similar to India? Malaysia. They have 30%. So India must be 30%. God help us. We don't have that. I already said why. And I went to the WHO site and then tried to look for India. It's an alphabetic order. So it must be between Hungary and uh, Iceland. After Iceland and Iran, it's not there. It's not there because we didn't send. We didn't send because we didn't have it. Or maybe the people who sent it are embarrassed or say, forward it. Anyhow, this is a fact. So we must tighten up our data base so that we can start, however low we are, we can start there and there. the only way we can go is up. The few statistics like uh, coverages for occupational health and safety, India is almost near the bottom. And so we must come up. The only way is up. And another statistic I was able to find, we are very poor, the pink is the India, and then we have comparatively Vietnam, which is green, and they are much better than us. And Finland, of course, one of the top countries is in blue. They're very good. These are things which we must look to and a goal to reach, and we can reach them. Now, the only data we are able to get is by extrapolation. Again, I'm running out of time, but let me tell you, there are very good publications, very few publications from India. Where do we get the data? One thing, the trick they did was, we know about cement bags because that is a licensed product. It's a factory produced product. We know how much each state gets, how much each, how many bags of cement gets. So correlate the bags of cement to the number of deaths because deaths have to be reported. And then extrapolate, apply to all the states. So this is one way. Another way, you know the population of the state, you know the number of deaths. So if one state like uh, Andhra Pradesh has uh, so many deaths for so much population, apply the same proportion. But you know, we must be sad about this. We can gather data. Then another interesting, these are all, they show how much brains, how much smart we are. So one research paper said, I look at the newspapers. The newspapers certainly report uh, accidents and so on. So I look into the Indian Express for four years, five years, 2008 to 2012. So he gathered 10 in, uh, reports from Delhi Metro Rail Corporation. And then he went to the hospitals and uh, conducted some other research and so on. The actual number of deaths was 56. So 10 over 56 were the newspaper report. So he extrapolated that. Sad, but remarkable in its astuteness. So this is, these are the st sad state of data in India. But on, on the other hand, we have some very good data apart from central government. We get my uh, Karnataka state government, highway department has world-class statistics. And a few other states have, I have no time to show it, but we have world-class statistics because we have world-class people. So we have been more sinned against. We, we are not as much sinning as sinned against. Circumstances have forced us, and engineers must remember that without good data, we are nowhere, we are nobody, 
we know we can do it. We get the data, demand the data, and share the data. So let me uh, rush through hazards. I've already talked about many things. I want to focus on falling from height. This is from an Indian uh, database. And then falling from height, so many in the three years, it has not changed much. In fact, in 2013, it is more than the other two years. The second highest is electrocution. The third falling down, instead of falling from height, is falling into depth. So if you add those two, falling from height is the worst. And again, another statistic shows even in Singapore, construction accounts for the maximum number of falls, then manufacturing and cleaning and landscaping. So falling from height, and no wonder if 48,000 workers die in India and about 38 fatal accidents take place every day, no wonder he's standing with just his feet on the bamboo. He has got to open up a rope, put a bamboo with nobody's help, and tie it so that others can climb safely, so that others' buildings can be safely built. It's not fair, not right. We have so many other ways of doing it. Guard rails, full body harness and requirements, which I have no time to go into. And then, I don't know, I may not have time for the movie, but there is a movie which talks about falling from height. So I'm skipping that. Now, what are the solutions? What can we do? We can raise public awareness so that better knowledge and then what we can, what the public should demand from the professionals and what the professionals from demand from the public and from their uh, employees. And now, so let us decide enough is enough. Those of us who know, like all 47 or 45 of us, let us share the problems. Let us share our knowledge with our colleagues, with our juniors, with our seniors, with our friends with our families, with our neighbors, until enough people understand, enough people are embarrassed, enough people are shamed, enough people feel the pride, no, no use being shamed if you don't get pride to do otherwise, enough people want to set things right and then set things up. We can do it. So among the solutions, raising awareness and uh, engineering leaders know the problems, we hear from leaders and leaders like CEAs, uh, Consulting Engineers Association of India, and if somebody hacks half a column by for to fix a gate, how will the column live? So there are so many things. Bangalore is doing a marathon, a walkathon, and they were they have been able to do some things. And uh, government has begun to look into it, and hopefully, at least one state. I don't know about other states. One city, and Hyderabad is also doing something from it. So we have a duty of care to society. Let us awaken to that. Let us take care of every bit of our work, however small, however insignificant, and we must not allow bad things to happen. Public must be educated not to put up with efficiency. Conduct risk assessment, that's another talk. I am saving it for another lecture. So there are, we got, we look hopefully to the next five years where they say we are going to be the highest the best in the world for construction, take advantage of it. There are so many things waiting for us, trillion US dollars, and these are the things you must look into. So with that, let me stop and then close and thank you. And I'll allow for questions and comments. Thank you, sirs. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. So you were uh, highly informative and is eye-opening lecture for all our participants and myself. Because you have shared a lot of data. So actually, then only designers or builders or a contractor can think twice before making a mistake. You send a right message today to all the participants, almost 50 plus online and YouTube to 10 plus. I hope all participants will agree what Professor has shared, the information is truly useful to all of us to plan better, design better, construct better. Otherwise, the structure will collapse, then the image of the country will go down. And uh, you are rightly put, sir, things uh, in a proper way. And also, I'm very happy the energy level of what you have. Continuously, you spoke one and a half, more than one and a half hour. The same energy what I observed two years back when I attended offline at international seminar. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you a lot for your uh, preparation of uh, many slides. Excellent presentation of your slides. I never come across slides presentation like this. 
even uh, the points uh, disappearing what you presented first time i am seeing my career sir thank you lot for your uh, time and also your uh, sharing of information to educate all of us in the area of construction now i request all the participants to uh, talk to the uh, to speaker of the day and clarify your doubts otherwise sanat kumar sanat while we have while they are thinking about it i have three questions in the chat box under yes, sanat sir. kumar has some more okay answer them yeah you just name the uh, speaker and just uh, highlight sanat okay sir uh rohit kumar bye is there any institute yeah. where uh, we can report the dvns uh, about the work yes there are can you hear me okay yes yes sir yes sir please see i i have spent a lot of my life outside india but now that i have decided to share my experience with india i go deep into it did a lot of data mining and i'm surprised to find that in the last uh, recent decade 8 or 10 years the amount of data the organization of data the organizations to which you can send data and seek data from have gone from almost nothing to a considerable amount there are equally good government sources state government sources and i am in touch with some of them i have talked to some of them karnataka has also a very good basis for reporting i won't call it a complaint let us call it a report reporting of good data reporting of bad practices so you write to me an email and then maybe i will write to you actual links to whom to correct my email is uh, cwsh.nie@gmail.com uh, i shared your uh, resume also over oh. then the participant is known that is what i want yeah yeah next question uh, sir uh, let us know is there any early warning system developed in india to detect a, a complete or a sudden collapse of building that deserves another lecture sensors <laughs> smart structures i'll try to i'll try to open windows on it you know today they can instrument a building for its lifetime we human beings go to hospitals to take x rays to get mri scans and uh, blood pressure and so on but buildings can be instrumented today with so much very inexpensive instrumentation if only the public opens its eyes to it you see they blame more and more on engineers and contractors cut down their profit margin until the quality becomes bad so the public must be educated pre collapse warning is important to you good safe structures are important to you so you pay 2% more pay at least half of what you place for those fancy interior decoration and uh, beautiful looking things pay for safety so number 1 there already built buildings you can still instrument them if you see a small crack stick a piece of paper on it with a date on it if it opens up it will tear so be sure not to throw water on it. in other words let us become let the public become a little bit technology oriented I lived in America for 19 years, and I can do many things that many contractors can do. I fix my own um, leakages. I repair my own things with epoxy. You can do it. In fact, an ordinary household, an ordinary citizen can build a house today, just buying things. I don't want us to do that. Let us give engineers and contracts their livelihood. So, number one, you can instrument it if you're sufficient, especially a public building. You can instrument it with almost invisible non intrusive building small devices it may not go backwards but it will tell you and then there are uh, non destructive scanners that is things that will show you cracks in the concrete failures in the steel and then inside concrete there are instruments available you must you must just open up your mind and give the engineers a chance to do their job don't put engineers as a tailor or tailors are important but don't treat them like a, like a side uh, consultant something you pay and get things done and then go somebody so number 
again, I can send you more, but there are. But sudden collapse, it's a sin committed during design. So get hold of the design instruments and let pay somebody a couple of thousand rupees to check whether today it's all right. You may have rented a building, but he might have added two floors to it before you rented it. And so those two floors can make it collapse next year. So number one, if you want to be sure of an existing building, track back its original design if you can, if they're available. And then you can certainly do some things to what was intended and what is today. You may find many, many modifications, not all of which will be healthy. So there are then for new buildings, they spend some money to instrument them so that and have clean records. Like a car, when you buy a car, you got a book to go with the car. If you sell the car, you give the car. But for buildings, there is nothing. You buy a building, you, a state real estate agent will tell you this is what Maharaja built for his own guest house. You, you are lucky to get so much and so on. All those are, you know, it's real estate sales stuff. Get drawings, have, have a real engineer do non-destructive testing and then move in. Don't move in. Don't buy a house. Don't buy a site because it is 5% cheap. It is probably on a riverbed and the next year or the next year the floods will come and then you'll, you'll <laughs> beat your uh, mouth and say, and I got a wrong deal. Cheapness means probably it is not worth it. If some deal is very good, don't believe it. I think that's what I'll stop. Next question. Yeah. Uh, you can unmute. Who am I talking to? Can I see the face? I like yeah, yeah. She is an engineer. Into, please introduce all the participants. I request to introduce before asking the question. I would be happy to see the faces. I may not remember them. Uh, I see Vijay and Vijay, Vijay with a nice car. Uh. <laughs> anyway, who wants to, who wants to ask the question? There is any questions? I had one more here. Okay, Prithviraj. You can yeah. unmute and you can speak. Yeah. Where are you? Please introduce. Uh, he, he, please. Uh, ah, okay. Yes, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. Prithviraj. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm I can see you. Tell me, Prithviraj. From Kalbari Nirmiti Kendra, sir. Hmm. He's from Gulbarga. You, you talk most of the about the responsibility of civil engineer making in construction. No? So this can be reduced by government and political politics party. And the government matu politics are aro most important in the society wellness or wagi construction engineer do awareness create mark fixer. Sir. We love it. <laughs> Don't get Sorry, me. There is no answer. question, sir. Actually, I, I, I was saying. I'll tell you something. Okay, okay. Sir. I may sound philosophical, but there is a truth in it. Many things are related to politics. The good we get is related to politics. We forget all of that. We always complain about the bad things from politics. Politics, yes, politicians, the government will run only with the support with the contributions from the people. Yes. So I want to touch the basics because I don't have time to come to specifics. Are we all paying our taxes? Yes, yes sir. Are we paying our employees what they deserve? You know, Singapore ministers get millions of dollars salaries. Lee Kuan Yew, the father of Singapore nation had one philosophy. Pay them enough not to be tempted. Of course, greed is, has no limits. If the person has two cars, he wants four cars. If somebody, uh, some lady has one necklace, they will want half a dozen. It's universal. But the question is, are we matching private company salaries? I don't know. That is number two. If the government is doing its job, then where should where does corruption start? It starts with a giver and a taker. And I'll tell you honestly, human nature all over the world, and I've been all over the world, is that when we are in trouble, we want to bend the rules. Yes, sir. We want to save somebody, we don't care. But then when it happens to somebody else, we immediately get upset. That too is true. So there should be a balance. The emergency situations, 
life saving situations the government should have a caveat yes the government should have an exception and who is the government yes america said this you get the government you deserve or yeah, all of you voting when i was whenever i am in india and i stayed in india i would stand in a line for the voting booth and all our neighbors would say sir professor you should go forward you should not stand in line i said you are a voter i am a voter i will be there in about 5 minutes i won't ask you individually but ask your family ask your friends have you all voted we are so eager to complain about politics and politicians who elected them you say oh they pay to elect their own uh, 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 ethnic group or religious group or whatever yeah. voting is for everybody so anyway these are big questions which i am unable to solve i can only say don't be carried away with it don't join mm-hmm. the crowd i know you may have to do emergency to get a 10 crore project you may have to show a little bit be reasonable meaning something to do a paper it will transition time this is the transition time for india the time is going running out india has the biggest advantage in the world having the maximum number of youth for the next 20 years yes sir i wish i could count myself in my mind is youthful but you parvataraj yes sir you are among the youth yes sir the if they are, if they keep youth. asking quality work we can provide sir actually ni veel be be kar he leader is yes sir sorry to interfere parvataraj it is your responsibility to okay, take care okay. of the quality because at the lower level you are answerable yes, yes sir <laughs> next Anyway, I, I can you see i am not directly in control if i were there maybe i'll carry a pole with a with a flag i am an engineer let me live honestly that may be that's different but i told you about normalization of deviance you are getting used to all the inefficiencies you are letting it go there are big things at stake why should i small things count little drops of water make the mighty ocean start with small things start with your road start with your municipality council stand for election carry your carry your idealism forward how many engineers are standing for election our your chief minister luckily is an engineer thank god yes but sir mv was an engineer he was the diwan of my soul he created in other words i may be idealistic i may not be very practical but i can only be a teacher i can only show you the higher way i cannot show you or suffer like everybody do like everybody i am not like everybody and i am an uncommon man i have suffered i have lost some projects because i stood my ground when i was running a computer center in india i had to get a 112 rupee bill passed by the government i won't mention the year or the place and the the, 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 the man at the door said budi solpa itra nadavutte i took my car and drove to bangalore mysore to bangalore half a dozen times to get 120 rupees now what could i do i did try to do something because i was a non profit society i put my own. anyway my personal story may not be important <laughs> but i am suggesting you thanks for sharing sir i think you should all make sure that you vote and you consider and group pressure is always work. bangalore you see bangalore put group pressure and they it worked and i think another state gujarat or uh, another state in north india did they got something like that. anyway thank you thank uh, you i cannot answer so, parvatraj actually we should change ourselves then we can change our surroundings then the society like that only we have to we have to be transformed what professor has said i can yeah. i can contribute ideas but uh, people want you know aict scale aict says aict is the big academic group which certifies engineering they say some people about 80 don't use them for teaching yes sir what you do you say, do about it say it came 60 sir now <laughs> why don't you write allo krishna murthy to teach i will be happy to teach you cannot change we cannot change our own society our own organization how can we change bada bada government <laughs> yes sir any other questions abilash do you have any questions Thank you for asking though I may not answer everything but Surendra I... Surendra Patel Yes sir I'm you are any questions Good evening sir Good evening. 
आर यू अभिलाष सुरेंद्र पटेल प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस योरसेल्फ सर माय सेल्फ सुरेंद्र पटेल ओके पटेल आई सी योर प्रोफाइल पिक्चर वेरी हैंडसम ओके यस सर दिस इज मी सर वेरी हैंडसम डोंट वरी यू आर ओके ओके टेल मी टेल मी सर आई एम वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट इंजीनियर इन कैशोटेक निर्मित केंद्र रायचूर सर रायचूर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ಎಲ್ಲ ಸೆಷನ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಟೋಟಲಿ ನೋಡಿದೆ ಸರ್ ಐ ಗ್ರಾಜುಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮೈಸೂರು ಓನ್ಲಿ ಸರ್ ಎಸ್ ಜೆ ಸಿ ಮೈಸೂರ್ ಐ ಟಾಟ್ ಅಟ್ ಮೈಸೂರ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ವಿಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಇನ್ ಎಸ್ ಜೆ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ 2012 ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಪಾಸ್ಡ್ ಔಟ್ ಇನ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡನ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಇನ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಬಿ ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಸರ್ ನೈ ಸೇಫ್ಟಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ನೋಡಿದೆ ಸರ್ ಬಟ್ ಈ ಎಸ್ ಜೆ ಸಿ ವಾಸ್ Uh, i think uh, this introduced uh, this uh, our branch construction technology management first in ug level and uh, uh, we uh, this uh, our level only we started internship uh, before the passing out sir so avaga namgella site work ella karkondu hobuttu two months compulsory internship it, sir we learnt all about all safety it ella introduction ella kottru actual uh, practical site work so still there is a lot of uh, you have any query to ask professor you have any query to ask no no query sir no query thank you thank you thank you arpita 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 is there illa papa question en kelin valla illa sir he is happy about your presentation <laughs> oh that that you can write by email <laughs> hearing it makes me blush and you cannot even see me blush <laughs> ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ so we have to throw a more light on these factors in construction industries as well uh, thank you sir for wonderful lecture it was very informative and interesting your guidance and lecture will be very useful for our engineers and participants sir thank you thanks a lot thank you once again sir. and also we wish to have a few more lectures in the second uh, second, uh, second mm-hmm. spell also sir and uh, we will uh, forensic engineering is the one of the area you are expert as per your uh, resume i saw that and also a few interesting topics uh, you can uh, share to our engineers also sir for highly beneficial and also i am thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, sharing all this information even your background itself i am very happy to see sir because the background your design says that uh, it will send a message mm-hmm. still at this age you are able to maintain the quality preparation slides content mm-hmm. everything 100% so i am very very happy sir i wish to have uh, two more uh, lectures in future for our engineers to learn ourselves so actually one message you have to carry today so we should educate ourselves next our family next our adjacent to family and our ward like that only we have to go otherwise we cannot simply pass the buck on our administrators and we cannot escape there is no solution for that sir has given clearly how message has to go as well as anything not only the construction any activity is it not therefore i will assure professor on this occasion definitely all our participants will carry messages they will work as a team and they will carry their message they will try to implement at least uh, 30 to 40% expect from all the pers- participants thank you once again sir for your uh, time and uh, sharing this information and also i thank am prakash sir he only introduced sir actually i visited his office immediately shared your contact details even though i know i just lost your contact so that is it. only sorry sir i am not able to get uh, immediately for this and also i thank uh, my arvind like uh, coordinating mysore center we spoke to him sir we will work together sir uh, director sir actually sir has expressed uh, they want to make one center of excellence in bangalore health safety and uh, occupational hazards sir whether we will do it our center sir I'll yes be- we can sir yes we can i will be happy to receive any dialogue on joining forces on safety please write to me and we will work our team will have work together to share your uh, work and experience therefore i requested professor next visit to bangalore i think now covid has reduced sir uh, annually few symptoms 
I, I am here uh, please, virtually. Please do visit I, our center, sir. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. But virtually, I am with you all now. Let us thank you, sir. Thank the you. best we can this way. Because uh, this uh, quality. Uh, you are me to come to India. I don't know. Professor, uh, sir, with uh, sir, self, we definitely we can uh, think of this uh, center. Yes, of we have one uh, because the uh, skill development, not only uh, importing skills, sir, we have to import the safety aspects, occupational hazards. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. management uh, because it is a part of the construction management therefore definitely we will have all this uh, this thing sir uh, sure. wish to meet you and also i wish to have one more uh, one or two lectures sir and the next four oh, one sir. or two it can go to 10 or 20 thank you thank you very much sir thank you a lot i'm very much happy sir a series also, of lectures okay thank you thank you very much sir and also thank you once again our director sir and uh, all the participants engineers from nirmiti kendra and also the professors and uh, MTech students joined from Nagarjuna College of Engineering. Last but not this is, uh, least, uh, Mr. Sanat Kumar. So Sanat Kumar is the coordinator of all online programs.